Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Zurius and welcome to my first ever tutorial video. This is part one in a series where we will be taking a pickaxe that you will make and gradually improve it over every single video. So the goal of this video is to give you a brief introduction to the tools we'll be working with, which is Blockbench. I'll leave a, a link in the description for you. I will show you how we make our first ever model. I'll show you how to texture that model. And I'll show you how to make a resource pack for the model and how to get it in game. So by the end of this video, you should have a working model inside Minecraft. So once you've got Blockbench installed and you open it, this is the screen that you'll see. The only thing we want to focus on at the moment is the Java block item. And we get to this screen here and we need to give it a file name. So I'm just going to go with future pickaxe and you can leave the rest of the settings as default for now. And there we are. Here we are in a 3D environment. I can right click to move around. I can left click to rotate. And now what? So before you even start making anything here, what you want to do is have an idea of what you plan to make and design. For my design, I decided I want to make a futuristic pickaxe, as you probably guessed from the file name. I've got a brief drawing here of my pickaxe, which I won't be showing because my drawing skills are far, far below any of my modeling skills. And I'm going to be working from that. So I suggest you have a think about what you want to make. See if you can find some images online or potentially draw your own little sketch. And once you've got an idea of what to go on, you can proceed. Now, of course, if you don't want to do that, you can check the description and there is a download to all of the files in this tutorial. You can load up my pickaxe, you can play around with it, or you can try and make it from scratch as we go through the video. It's entirely up to you. So first thing we need to do is go over here to the outliner and click add cube. And here we go, we've got our first little 3D cube. Now what I always like to do is I like to just hit Control A to select everything. In this case it was already selected, but I did it anyway. And then I like to click center all and then center pivot. So then we have the cube and the pivot point that it rotates around in the middle of our workspace. So my first objective is I'm going to do a basic outline of what I want the pickaxe to look like. What I do is I use a lot of hotkeys in this, so I'm holding down Alt and you'll see that it changes to these little blocks. I let go, it changes back. Right now we're in the movement mode, which is this little hand up here. If I hold down Alt, it changes to the resize mode here. So holding Alt, I can just grab one of these boxes and resize the box however I want. You can also hold down Shift, which gives you an even smaller level of movement. Or if you want to get really small, you can hold down Control, Alt and Shift and get very, very small movements. Now Control and Shift also works with moving the object as well as just holding Shift. You'll see that it's snapping to half blocks. So for now, I'm just going to stick to doing a base block outline of the pickaxe. What I like to do is I will right click and duplicate and you'll get another box, but it's inside this. I need to stop saying boxes because they're not boxes, they're cubes. I'm just going to bring this up here. And what I want to do is I want to make this a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to pull out these sides here. See, already it's starting to look like something you'd hold in your hand, isn't it? Let's just get the top of the pickaxe here. I think that should be okay for now. Now you can already see over here that we're starting to get a lot of different cubes here. And if you don't do something about this, it will get very confusing very quickly. So I'm just going to take all of these and rename them. I'm just going to call them um, base handle. You can name it whatever you want, it's entirely up to you. I'm also going to put them into a group and then just call that base handle as well. So now I can manage that entire group inside here. I can make the whole thing invisible, I can move it all at once, etc, etc. One other thing I like to do is you can recolor these with the marker color. So let's make this light blue, there you go. Or I can grab the bottom one here, let's say we want this to be, just make that blue. You can do it by right clicking as well, blue. And then we have a sort of orangey color. So yeah, you can sort of do a little bit of coloring here, but this is not in any way a texture. This is just a, a 3D representation of the, the cubes in the faces. So let's take this box and make it a bit wider. Right, okay. I think what I also want to do is grab one of these and take it to the top here, but I need to make sure that the boxes don't overlap. So I'm just pulling this up until we've got this little box. But I just click on this and then click the little visibility icon here. I can make it invisible. We can have a quick look here looks fine to me. Or if you like, you can go to view, toggle wireframe, and you can see all the bounding boxes of the cubes, which is very handy to make sure that nothing that you're making is overlapping, because it's something you definitely don't want to do. So that all looks good. So I'm just going to continue creating cubes. So let's say that's the base handle there. So let's create a new group. It's created itself inside this group, which we don't want, so grab it and pull it out. Rename this to 
pick and then we'll just duplicate this cube and then pull it across here. I just need to make sure that it stays out of that group there so we don't get confused. As long as you can make sense of everything that's going on here, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. It's just something that I make sure that I keep on top of before I go over one with too many different cubes. So let's line this up here and we're going to shrink this a little bit. Now that's too much, so I'm going to hold shift and do a smaller increment of the snap here. Now for my pickaxe, what I want to do is I want to have it up here like this. We're going to then duplicate it again and bring this block over, making sure that it snaps in place correctly. So now this model is going to get a bit more complicated. So I've clicked on this edge here and we're going to go over to the rotation tools here. You can rotate the models on these axes, but as soon as I try to rotate more than one axis at a time, it is not like this. You can convert it to a free model as you were advised there with the warning, but that would be for an outside modeling tool or game such as Unity. Whereas with Minecraft, you really want to stick to these. But what you can do is if you get to one of the four cardinal directions or eight, I think in this case, I would say, it resets to zero again. So although we have rotated it 90 degrees, it's zeroed back out. So that's one way you can rotate in multiple axes by doing that. You see we've got it over here now, we've rotated it on three, then we can do this, and then we've rotated it again. Now when rotating a block inside block bench, what you want to do is click on the block and then click center pivot. And that will move your pivot point, which is where it rotates from, to the center of that block. You'll see that now instead of it moving around when I rotate, it stays in place. So what I want to do is I want to rotate it this way slightly. And I'm going to then bring it down and place it inside the block here. Now I want to try and get these shapes as close to joining as possible. My goal here is to make it look like a seamless transition between these two blocks. Sorry to interrupt everyone, Mr. X from the future here. While I was editing this video, I totally forgot to actually show you one of the most useful tools in Blockbench, and that is this one right here, Vertex Snap. Now I'm just going to quickly show you what it does. Click on the block, click vertex snap, you'll see that we've got all the edges here, the corners. Click that one there, click this block, and then click this one. It connects them up seamlessly. Cool! I just keep going and connecting these. Let's grab this one, connect this corner to this corner. Let's finally grab this one and connect it up here. There you go. We have a weird shape. So that's the vertex snap tool. Very, very useful. I'll probably go into it in more detail in a future video. But for the time being, on with this one. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty good. You're probably wondering what this flickering is. So that flickering is what's called Z fighting. So the layers are in the same position. So they are fighting to render which one is on top, which is what this flickering is. As part of my design, I will be shrinking this part slightly anyway. So let's just bring this in here. And then can we recenter? Let's just do a very careful recenter there. That looks good. So you'll see that the layers are no longer Z fighting because they're no longer on the same platform. And we still have the seamless edge up here, which is what I was looking for. But let's see if we can improve the bottom here. I'm going to just bring this up. Let's just see if we can get it as seamless down here as we can at the top. Okay, not quite as seamless as I would like, but it's really not something that someone is going to notice in game. So let's duplicate this box again, bring it out. So one thing you should keep in mind is that Minecraft and Blockbench are entirely limited to cubes. So if you want to make some sort of point or curve or any other shape like that, you have to somehow create it out of cubes. So that's what we're going to attempt to do here with this. So I'm just going to continue shrinking this and recentering. Now, one thing I actually need to do is I need to start shortening these blocks as they get closer to the point. And I think this one might be too long as well. So bear with me while I just readjust. Right, and we've got this third one here. I've rotated it again, so it's now in a 45 degree angle. And we're going to shorten this one as well, quite a bit this time. And what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this again and then just bring it out. Make sure we line these up. That looks good. And just going to gradually shorten it. So I'm going to just gradually bring it in until we get to some sort of point. So let's just take a quick zoom out and we can see here. 
So the first thing I can see is that this part here is probably too long, as is this part. So we'll gradually shorten these and bring them all together, but let's just try and get the base shape of the pickaxe out first. Okay, so there we have some sort of incremental decrease in the size until it goes down to a point. It definitely does need a bit more work because the overall shape isn't great at the moment. But what we can do before we do any more work on this is click on display on the top right here. And then you can see what it looks like in a player's hand, specifically my player skin. You can change the skin in the options if you like. So this is what it will look here. So we're looking at third person right, third person left, first person left and right, head if you can put it on your head, the ground which is if you've dropped the item, frame when it's actually on an item frame here. I actually use this technique a lot for my decoration packs and the GUI, so the, the inventory essentially. And each and every single one of these views you can rotate and fit your item to however you like. Kind of looks like a fun little scythe, doesn't it? Now another thing you can do in this while we render down game like this is down here where it says scale, you can scale it up and down. What I tend to do is hold shift and then click one of them up and it does all of the axes at once. Yeah, so you can see that's at double size. <laughs> it goes all the way up to four. So if you really want to make a mammoth weapon or tool, there's nothing stopping you. So I'm going to work a bit more on the shape here of the pick. And then once I've got something that I'm happy with, we'll be back and we can continue. Right, okay, here we go. Here is the pick. Uh, clearly I've redesigned it a bit. I went with something that was a bit more angular rather than the big curvature that I had in the previous one. I've changed the marker color on most of these blocks so you can see all the different shapes. And what you're looking at here is nothing but cubes that I have resized and rotated so that they make different angles and different points. So that's the shape that we've got there so far. So another thing that I like to use is quad view. So if you just click on this, you'll see that much like most conventional 3D modeling programs, you can get multiple views. This is very handy if you want to for instance, select multiple blocks. You can use click and drag as you normally would to select the blocks, do what you want with them, or just make sure that things are aligned on every axis. You see that I can zoom in here at the top level, check the alignment, check everything looks good, which it does. So yeah, if you're doing quite precision movements or resizes, it's good to use this so you know that everything's aligned properly. So you can also right click between fill view and quad view, just like that. Right, so we've got one of our halves of the pick. So let's grab this here. I'm just going to right click on our group and duplicate this. We're then going to transform and flip. So let's do flip X and there you go. We have a pickaxe. Kind of looks like some sort of devil's horn or ram's horn actually, but there's still a lot more work that needs to go into this. If you've not already done it, go to file and save your project. Just make sure you've saved it. Always save your stuff. So here's what to do for the time being. You want to save your stuff to the resource pack folders in Minecraft. This is the same folder where you put any other resource packs that you want to install to your game. So I'm just going to create a new folder in here and I'm just going to call it Future Pick. And I'm just going to save our Future Pick BB model here. If you want to get to that folder quickly, what I tend to do is press the Windows key, percentage, app, data, percentage. And there you go. You can then go into Minecraft and then scroll down to resource packs if I can find it. There it is. And then you can see all the things that I've downloaded and played with, including my custom things. And we have future pack right here. You can also see I have some shortcuts here, app data, resource pack, and the Minecraft vanilla jar, which is a very good reference. I would also suggest you pin these so that you can get to them easily. Now let's take another look at the pickaxe here. Yeah, it's looking pretty... It's looking pretty weird, to be honest with you, I'm not going to lie. Your, your pickaxe might look entirely different. Or maybe you're looking at the finished version of this already as I, I build this, which is a bit of a surreal thing to think about, that you're already looking at the finished product while I'm trying to figure out what to make. Now, the next part I want to do is start putting some more detail in the handle area and the hilt. Now, what I want to do is focus on this area down here first. So I'm going to go over to my display and just look at the ratios we've got going on here. So this is a one to one scale. So this is the full size product. And I want to do something where it sort of looks like it's going to fit in my character's hand. So it looks like I need to bring the handle up and down both areas to make it look like it fits properly. So let's just do this just now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to 
take this down to have another quick peek. Okay, that looks good. So I'm just going to use the translation tool over here, which lets me move it down. Okay, that's looking good. Now let's add some detail to this. So I'm going to duplicate this, move it to the side, and then we're going to shrink it all the way up. And then I'm going to shrink this one all the way down and move this back over. Duplicate this one and bring it down a couple. Make it come down here to match. And then I'm going to just bring it in on every side. And I can use the top down view for this here. So let's have a look at that. There you go. It actually looks like a handle now, doesn't it? And just for reference, that's what it looks like in the player's hand. So I'm going to create a new group and we'll leave it inside the handle group because it's going to be the handle detail group. And what I want to do is I want to make a sort of hand guard, but also a handle. So I'm just going to duplicate this base one here and we're going to rotate it. Uh, let's see, do we want 45 degrees? I think I do, but I want it the other way. So let's go to transform and flip X to move over there. Now I want to make this quite skinny. So whoops, not that skinny. So let's just hold shift and control. Shift and alt, sorry. And we'll do the same in this dimension here. Probably about that. Center it. Right, perfect. Let's duplicate this. And if I do flip Y, it's gone up there, which is fine. Although I can't actually bring it down properly. It has to go on the same axis. This is where it's going to get a bit more complicated here. Uh, let's just take this again and do another duplicate. And this time we want to have it back on the zero rotation because we're going to do this here to make a handguard. Essentially, I'm going to just bring these all the way down until they are overlapping slightly. Do the same here and then bring this in. Now, what we want is we want to have an angle on the edges here. So we want to bring the vertical slice here higher than the angled one. And then what we'll do is we will just bring these up ever so slightly. Can we get the exact measurement? So I might need to bring this down a little bit. Oh, that's so close. Not bad. Not bad at all. So it looks like I've got the handle on the wrong way here. What I could do is I could just use the rotation here to turn it around. If I can find the right part, there we go, and do this. And how does it look in first person? Well, okay, yeah, we definitely need to fix this. So let's get a, a nice angle. I'd say about there is fine. Again, this is entirely your preference of how you want your model to look. You don't have to copy my settings at all. You can do whatever you like. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. What I can also do is up here, I can click the copy button and then move to the other side. You'll see it's still default. If I just paste this in, it'll just keep copy over the same settings. You might have to do some adjusting because you can see here that the handle has gone back the other way. So we just need to get that to around about 94, I think, around about there. That looks good. And you can see it bobbing up and down on the ground there. Let's bring it up a bit so it's not falling into the ground. Now, this model is quite big. You don't really want a model this size on the ground. You could have it that size on the ground if you wanted. Personal preference entirely. So I'm just going to cut the scale down by half. There we go. That's a bit more reasonable. So let's just do the frame while we're here because at this stage, most of the actual outline of the model itself has been finished. So most of these settings won't be changed again at this point. I think what I'll do is I'll scale it down a little bit here. So let's go for 0.75. Oh, where's it gone? Oh, it's 0 0.075. No, no, that's totally, see, look at that. Look how tiny it is. I mean, if you wanted to, you could do that, but you wouldn't be able to see it very well. Now, while I was adjusting things, I had a good look at the handle here. And I'm going to be honest, I don't really like it. So I'm just going to just grab it here and delete it. And what I'm wanting to do is I'm going to just make another one. But this one's going to be a lot more angular and square. Right, there we have it. Something a bit more angular. I'm just going to leave it like that for now. I may change it later again in the future, but for now I think it's fine. Now, the last thing I wanted to do here for the handle is a little bit more detail. I'm just going to grab this and pull it out again. And we're going to just make a couple of cubes on the side over here. 
around about that size, I think. In fact, let's change the color of this so I can see it a bit better. There we go. Bring this all the way in. Now there's an extremely high chance of no one ever actually seeing the details that you're putting here, especially since it's in the area where the player holds the item. But you just have to go with the flow and do something that you enjoy and something that you're proud of. And I want to do a little bit of a hilt here that's got some buttons on it. And that's a little button there. So I'll maybe do a bright color on there so it stands out a bit more. So I think that's enough for the handle. We'll just leave that as is for now. We need to do something with this here. Again, this is still part of the handle, I suppose, but let's see if we can just do a bit of detailing on it. So I've just duplicated that another two times and I'm just going to do the same thing that I did with the hilt. I'm just going to pull these two blocks up and down and you'll see that I've got a third one here. So I'll just pull that out, bring these up until I've got the desired level. I think a bit thicker with these two. There we go. Bring this down so that we can see the size difference. Let's just jump back to the full view so I can see what's going on here. So I'm just going to shrink this ever so slightly on every side and then pull it back up and back down to match up. Now the problem I'm facing now is this looks way, way too top heavy. Obviously it doesn't really matter from a, a gameplay point of view, but for me it just looks kind of wrong. So let me just see if I can fix this a bit. There we go, that's looking a bit better. So we'll leave the handle and the hilt for like that for now. Um, I think we need some more detail up top here. So let's just grab this block here, pull it up and do the same with this. Maybe shrink this a little bit so that's a bit more consistent. That's looking all right. Not much more detail needed there. Now let's head over here so we can do some detailing. So what I want to do is I want to do a sort of like a handle coming out of here and maybe going over here and into the center part or maybe just a small one here, just something that gives it a bit more shape and definition. Okay, everyone, and here we have my air quotes finished pickaxe. I did some supports on both sides of the pick up here and some supports under here and done a nice little emblem here on the front of the pickaxe. So I'm not going to mess with this anymore because if I do, I will just keep detailing this thing until it's a, a jumbled mess of cubes, if it isn't already by your standards. So what's next? We're going to add some textures to this bad boy. So on the left here, I'm sure you've noticed we've got textures and it's empty. We're going to click import texture. So what I like to do is I like to use the Minecraft's default textures. The reason for this is it's easier for the properties file to load the textures from the default Minecraft file, the, the jar file, rather than it, your own textures. But there's nothing stopping you creating your own textures for this either. What I would recommend is you grab the default Minecraft jar and I'll show you where you can grab that. So we'll just go into app data, roaming Minecraft, if I can find it up the top here, and then versions. And then you have all the versions. So clearly I've got quite a few of them installed here. And what we're looking for in this case is 14.4. And this is what you're looking for here. So if I just open this, so you can open this with WinZip, WinMar, 7zip, etc. And this is all the, the Minecraft files. And what you're looking for is in the Minecraft folder textures. And in most cases, whenever I do this, I'm in the block folder. And if I just load up one of these images, you can see it is the actual texture used by Minecraft. I think that was a pumpkin stem, melon stem, so there you have it. So I'm going to be using most of the stuff from in here. Now you have to extract this somewhere, so that if, if I just extract this for example. So you see we've now got it in the folder, I can just do the exact same thing, go back into the Minecraft folder, textures block, and then we can see all of the files. I like to use view tiles, you get a, a bigger thumbnail of them. And there you can see all of Minecraft's texture files, which we'll be using. But I've already got a vanilla jar extracted that I like to use. So let's just navigate to that here. This might be a bit different because I've only taken stuff that I would actually ever use. So the block textures. Now, now we get to decide what this thing's going to look like. Now, what I'm feeling is we definitely need some sort of metal texture, some sort of clean metal. Now, keep in mind, it doesn't have to actually be a metal texture that you use. You can make this look however you like. So 
So the anvil is quite a rough looking texture, so maybe not that. We do have the blast furnace, so let's. what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a couple of these. So I'm just holding shift and I'm going to grab these two blast furnace textures and open them. And you'll see we've got them in here. Now comes the fun part. So let's just pick, uh, let's just pick this side. So I've clicked on my whole group here on the right side. And I'm just going to grab the blast furnace and I'm going to right click and then click apply to cubes. And there you have it. It's applied that texture to every side of the cubes that I had selected. Now this is a very, very basic way of doing this. If you wanted, you could just hit control A and then apply this to the entire thing if you really wanted to. I actually kind of like that, to be honest. <laughs> Not gonna lie. But let's go back to this. Click on an individual cube and up here, I'm just gonna expand this a bit so you can see. This is the texture that is currently mapping to this block. To avoid things looking strange and off scale, what I tend to do is click this button here, Auto UV, where in this case it was already correct. It will set this box here to the actual size of the cube so the scaling is correct. But if you want, you can just grab this and say, I want this big chunk of texture to be in this cube here. So you'll see what we've got. The box here corresponds with what's there. I could do this if I want, and you see we've got almost the full blast furnace texture there. But obviously, you've got a huge scaling issue here because you've got so many pixels jammed in here and then you've got what five and a half six ish pixels here so what i tend to do is just to click here i will just do Control a and then auto uv and it will apply the correct size of texture to all sides and what i will then do is i will then click say a bottom side click auto uv click a top side Auto UV, just to make sure that it's doing it for every single side. And there we go. Keep in mind, I'm pressing Control A, so it's doing this with the whole model right now. Um, but there's no textures on the rest of the model, so nothing's actually changing. So let's actually make a conscious effort to choose the textures we want here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select a piece of a texture I like for this part here. I think that looks all right. I'm then going to hit Apply to All Faces. So this single texture here will go around every single part of this one cube. And then you just want to make sure that you do auto UV as well so that you don't have any stretching. Right, I'm going to do this to the rest of this side and we'll see how it looks. Okay, that's not looking too shabby at all. You see that I've gone with lighter colours as it gets closer to the pick edge here. I've just done that by selecting a light colour here as I went on. I've also done a light colour here on this little edge and the sort of handle up here. Gives it a bit more contrast and makes it stand out a bit more. Now because our model here is symmetrical, what I can do to make things easier on myself is rather than having to retexture this side, obviously, all I have to do is delete this. Also delete this little support beam here because we don't really need that one. And then I'll just duplicate it back over. So our pickaxe is actually starting to resemble an actual pickaxe now. So what I want you guys to do is just to go through the textures, find stuff that you think is appropriate to your model, and then just start applying them the same way that I've done here. Once we've finished that, we'll be back with a fully textured object. So if you followed along up to this point, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. Here we have a completely textured model. You'll see down in the bottom left here, I have added a couple of additional textures. Smithing table, just for some additional color here. Lapis block, obviously the big jewel here in the middle, and also the little button down here. And we've also got the top texture of an anvil because I wanted something a bit different for the middle handle here in the tops. Something that wasn't as noisy as the rest of it, so it stood out a little bit more. But there you have it, that's a fully textured model. If you haven't already, make sure that you go in here and check all of your display settings. Just click through all of these and make sure that you're happy with how it looks. Now I'm going to be honest, it looks pretty big here. But I'm not going to change it for now. The next step is we're going to get this thing in-game and then we'll see how it really looks. So how do we get this in-game, you ask? Well, let's see how we do that. So you want to go to File and Export and Export your model. And what we are going to do is, you remember that folder we made earlier in the Resource Packs folder? We're going to go back in here and we've got Future Pick. we we'll just go in here. Now because this is going to be an Optify model, we have to follow some certain rules. And what I'm going to show you is the basic path structure of these resource packs. So in our main folder here, future pick, we are then going to create assets. And then Minecraft. Optifine. 
then CIT, which is where our custom items will be. Now I'm just going to put these in the correct folders. So what we want to do is we want to put CIT inside Optifine, put Optifine inside, oops, and then put Optifine inside Minecraft and then Minecraft inside Assets. So what you should have is, let's start from the top, Minecraft, Resource Packs, the pack name, which in this case is Future Pick, Assets, Minecraft, Optifine, CIT, and then from this folder, you can structure it however you like. So I'm going to just do one called Pickaxes and then save another folder in here and just call it Future Pick. Now it's at this point, it's worth mentioning that whenever you're making folders or file names, please don't use any capital letters. It just makes things a lot harder. Just make sure you're using lowercase and don't use any spaces. So you'll see here, I've got future underscore pickaxe. That's absolutely fine. You can do that if you like. So I'm going to save that right there. So what exactly did we just save? This is it here, futurepickaxe.json. And if I double click or open this with any other text editing program, you'll see this. This is the way that Minecraft reads and renders model files. You'll see that it's referencing all the textures up here and their locations because these are all internal textures. It's looking in block. And then you can see all of the elements, which are all the parts. So we've got the sizes of them, the faces of them, the coordinates of the texture and what texture that is. And basically this is what this file is here all the way down. And then we've got the display options of the item right here, which is the rotation and the translation of the item when it's in the player's hand, first person, etc, etc. So what we have to do now is define a properties file. This is the file that tells Minecraft the type of item that you want to replace and how you want to replace it. Don't worry about writing this yourself, just check the pack that I've left in the downloads. There is instructions in there, it tells you exactly what to do here. And I'll also leave a link to the Optifine master file that explains this whole file and all the possible options for you. So here's what we want to do for the future pick. So the type is item. So for match items, we want to do Minecraft semicolon diamond underscore pickaxe and texture file. Now in this instance, it's not a texture file. It's a JSON file, which is a model file. So if I just take this away, type model equals and to reference something within the same folder, what you want to do is do a full stop and then slash and then the name of the file. So future pickaxe. And that will reference this file right here. Don't worry about the file name, you don't need that. So I have set up this so that when you change the name to whatever comes after the colon here, it will turn into your model. Now again, I would say if you want to really look into this and figure out how it works, check the master Optifine document in the description. But for this instance, all you have to know is I've set this up so that anytime someone types in future pick, it doesn't matter if it's lowercase, uppercase, etc. It will accept all of those. It just has to be future pick and it will work. So what I'm now going to do is save this file. I'm just going to grab the file path from up here and file save as. Let's just put it right there. So there we go, future pick. Dot JSON. This is where we want it. So what I want to do here is make sure that it's also called future pick and we're saving it as all types down here. So we're going to specify our own file type, which is properties. Now, again, you don't really have to worry about this. Just take the one in the description, copy, paste that, edit it how you like. Should be perfect. Save it. And there we have future pick properties. Now we're almost ready to get this in game. So the final step before we get this in game is we need a pack file and a pack icon. Uh, for my purposes, I have these two ready. This is the one that I use for any of my other packs. You just want pack.mc.meta and you want it in this format. Again, it's in the pack, don't worry. You can take this and copy and paste it. And an icon. The icon has to be 64 by 64. You can see down here, 64 by 64. I'm just going to grab these and copy them. And then we just put these here in the root directory of our pack, which is the one named after your pack, in this case, future pick. Now I don't need these, this is the, the model and the original JSON file. We've already saved all this, that's all good. I can get rid of that. And believe it or not everyone, that's it. We're done. We have got our CIT files in here. So we've got our model here, we've got our properties file here. All we have to do now is get in game. So here we are in game. I'm just gonna to go to options and resource packs. I'm going to just disable all of my other packs right now because we don't need those ones. What we're looking for is this one here, future pick. You'll see that it's got the details from the pack file and my pack icon. I'm just going to enable this and hit done. And it's now enabled. So what do we do now? Well, I've got my diamond pickaxe here. I just put it in here. 
and rename it Future Pick, you'll see that the icon changes. Grab this, and there you go. Our pickaxe is in game, and isn't she an absolute beauty? Look at this thing. Pretty cool if I do say so myself. Let's just grab a default diamond pickaxe as well. I usually like to do this so I can compare the size of them. Because you'll see the default diamond pickaxe is all the way down there. Our one, woof! So I may need to do some rescaling in the, this one. Let's have a look here as well. Yeah, that pickaxe is pretty beefy. But if that's what you're wanting, go for it. Hi everyone, future Mr. X here again interrupting. I just thought I would show you what the pickaxe now looks like. So since I finished the tutorial video, I went back and I kept working on this. And this is now what it looks like. I'm pretty proud of it now. It feels like something that I would actually put out for people to use. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to include a download for this version of the pickaxe and the one that you've seen me build in the video as well. So you can enjoy both of them. You can inspect them. You can change them and edit them however you like. Uh, if you do use them at any point in the future for anything, uh, please make sure you give me credit. I would appreciate that. But anyway, back to past me as we finish out this video. Thanks everyone. Well everyone, that about brings us to the end of part one of this tutorial series. I really, really hope you enjoyed this and I hope it was informative. If there's anything that you weren't quite clear on, please feel free to ask me in the comments. But if you really want to get a hold of me, join my Discord, the link's in the description. It's the best place to get, in, get a hold of me and ask questions and I'll do whatever I can to help you out. So everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. I really, really hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was helpful. If you do happen to make any custom models, please share them with me on Twitter or on Discord because I would love to see them. But we'll see you next time guys, so thanks for watching, have a good one.